Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to group dates in a pivot table. Let's start with a simple table here and we have our two column table. We have our dates and our quantity. To turn this into a pivot table, I just select anywhere within this range of cells. Go to insert pivot table and it's going to ask me my range. My range is A1 to B257. I'm going to have it on an existing worksheet, this particular worksheet. Let's not put it onto a new worksheet. So I'm going to select my location here in cell E5. Click OK. And now I can start to add my pivot table. Put the date in the rows field and put the quantity in the values field. You'll notice automatically Excel tries to guess and actually group the data. You see here that it's grouped the data in the years 2016 and 2017. Let's just expand everything. I'll right click and choose expand, uh, let's see, expand entire field, everything, right? And so we see that the way that it's done, it, it's it's grouped it into the year, quarter, and then months. But let's say we don't want to take the default setting and we want to do our, no, our own groupings. What we can do is just right click and go to ungroup and have it get rid of all the groupings that it's kind of guessed on. You can see here that it's taken the date labels here. Now, what I also like to do here with pivot tables is instead of having it in this compact view, compact form, which is the default, change it to tabular form. So you kind of get the headings there, right? This is the sum of the quantity here, and we've, we've got our dates. So if we wanted to go back and start from scratch and do grouping, I can right click anywhere in this grouping cell with the data and choose group, right? And so I have my different options here to group. I can group by months and years. So if I didn't want quarters and I just wanted to do years and months, I can just select years and months. I didn't have to do any uh, special control click. It lets me do that with a multi-select. Also, it automatically uh, groups them. Uh, and you can have the default to change with uh, different dates. And I'll show you an example of that later on. But let's say that we want to just take the auto. Click OK. And here we see that Excel has grouped it into years and the months, right? Because that's what we selected. Right here we have 2017. There's a couple dates in January. If I control down arrow, you'll see that there's a couple January dates here that are reflective of that. Let's control up arrow to go back up. Now, let's say for example, we wanted to have our week start out in, um, we want the group starting with a full week of each of the years. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's bring in the calendar. Uh, let's zoom out here. I'm going to bring in this calendar here so we can see it and go back to 100%. Uh, 102 is fine. Well, maybe 100. Right. And we'll notice here that the first year, the full, first full week of January starts on the 3rd. And the first full year of January, it also ends on the 31st. I don't have it shown here, but it ends on the 31st. And if we wanted to do something like that, what we need to do, let's ungroup this. Right click, and I'm just going to ungroup it and start with grouping again. And right click and go to group. Let's say we want to start at a full week. What I can do is uh, uncheck these boxes and have the full week start on the 3rd. Right? So I'm going to have it start on the first. That's the first full week of January. And the last full week of January is 31st. And to do this kind of grouping, if we wanted to do it by, um, and let's do it by, let's do it by weeks, right? You notice that there also is not a week here. So t in order to incorporate weeks, you have months and you have days, but somehow they're missing weeks. If we want to do weeks, we can go and just select days. Let's unselect months. And the number of days is uh, seven days in the week, right? So it's going to pick up seven days in the week here, seven days in the week here, and group by weeks. So that's how you can get around that. We have our other options here, but you notice that they don't have weeks. So that's how we would do it. That's the workaround. So when I click OK, now you notice that it's group by weeks for that year, right? So 13 to 19, 110 to 116, 117. Oh, what did I do here? Oh, I must have just did January. Let's right click. Go to group and change that to December. Right, click OK. 
And now we have our groupings, right, per week. 1, 3 to 1, 9. You can see 1, 3 to 1, 9 is that week. 1, 10 to 1, 16 is uh, the second full week of January. And so that, that's how we can group by weeks, even though there is no week option, right? So if we wanted to also do something like um, days of the week, you notice that it's not really there. If I right click and go group by, if I wanted to group by Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays, there's nothing here that tells you where to do that. What I would need to do is add a helper column in my source data. Let's cancel this. I'm going to go back here and go back to the top, control home to go back to the top and insert a column here. Let me click on right on B here and column B, right click and click insert. And let's say this is days of the week, right? And in order to get the days of the week out of the date here, I'll type equal text tab to open that. Click this value, comma, and use the format text. And to get the days of the week, it's in quotes, DDD. -D -D. Close quotes, close parentheses, press enter. And you, that first day is a Friday. You see that, of course. Let's bring this over here. The first day of the year is on a Friday. So I can just double click the fill handle down here to copy that formula down. And I have to incorporate this range of cells into the pivot table because I've changed it. I've added a column. So go under analyze, click on so change source data. Let's see if it picked it up. And it did actually, it picked it up because it's, it's saying column A1, which is here all the way to column C257, which is all the way down the bottom. So Excel was smart, smart enough to pick it up. I'll click OK, and you see that that field it doesn't show up here, and that's because we need to refresh the pivot table. I'll click anywhere in the pivot table, right click, and select refresh. And now you see that the days of the week show up here. So with days of the week, now I can add it in there and have it grouped by days of the week. So let me just kind of add that in there. Let's see what happens. Let's take let's take the day out, and now I have days of the week. On Sundays, we have this some, some other quantity here. And we can also do some additional grouping. So let's right click and click on group. And I think this probably may not work. Yeah, we can't group that selection. Let's add the date back in. We'll add the date back in here and and we'll get rid of the totals. We don't really need, really need the totals. Right click and uncheck that subtotal. And let's click on the grouping here for the date because I probably you you probably can't group on this textual uh, representation of the date. You have to group on the numerical representation of the date. So I'll just right click, go to group. And in this instance, let's say we wanted to group by months, right? We'll group by not days, but by months and click OK. And based on January's data, Every the, the Sundays in January we have a quantity of 688. The Mondays, 2340. Tuesdays, 1338. So you can see that there's different ways that we can do some grouping of the data here for dates, um, for days of the week, and that's adding the helper column. Now another way of grouping, which is uh, almost like filtering, is to add a timeline. And this was introduced in I believe Excel 2013 where we can add a timeline. It makes it just a little easier to go back and forth on the, the dates. Uh, it's kind of like grouping, kind of like filtering. What you need to do is right click on the data here and select this add as a timeline. And the beauty of this is it adds a, kind of like a really nice little horizontal scroll bar and it kind of filters things for you. So let's say for example I want to choose the the months, specific months that I want to a filter by and I can select January uh, let's move the scroll out to uh, maybe the first four months of the particular year February right so I can have that particular item change I can also do a filter for uh, let's see maybe maybe I'll do it for years and I only want it in 2016 I just wanted it for the full year in 2016 I can select that, or maybe I just want, I want everything, 2016, 2017. So let's see if we have our items that occur in 2017. Maybe we won't based on our filter or our grouping. Let's see, actually we do, because the things that are uh, greater than 1231, 2016 show up here. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, right? And the reason why it does that is because 
of our selection in the grouping. So uh, let me show you what, why, why it gives you that greater than sign. If I right click and go under group, you notice that we have our data end at 1231-2016. So anything that's above the year, that ending of the year 2016, it's just going to say greater than. So if I say just auto and click OK, it's going to change back. So let's go down and see if it picked up the 2017. And let's see, it didn't. Maybe we need to refresh this data. Right click refresh and see if we picked up our 2017 data. And oh, maybe it doesn't pick it up because it assumes that it's back in January. So because look, we had our, our January data here. Let's look for, let's add our year. Let me clear, let me clear this filter here. And let's see if we go scroll down, let's see if we can see it here. Uh, no, we still don't see it. And let's take a look and see where we might have missed it, right? So this is, his, this is January here. If I right click and go to group, and maybe I include my years, it's not quarters, my years, maybe I will see it because it's just doing months. It could have included the month data here. Uh, the 2016 and 2017 January data uh, in here. So click OK and now we have our year and if I scroll down yeah we have our year down here 2017 January so I probably included it, it up there. So there's a lot of ways you can uh, group data. So you can see that we can do grouping uh, based on uh, the different parameters here, years, quarters, months, days. If we wanted to get weeks, we would have to do some, a little bit of a configuration and indicate, let's select, deselect that, indicate uh, seven days in the week. And if we wanted to do some full weeks, and instead of letting Excel automatically uh, consider what the starting end dates are, we can also configure our starting and end dates here. And in addition, if we wanted to do some grouping, further grouping and, and grouping slash filtering, we can use the timeline feature in Excel and that's only available starting on Excel 2013 and above. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.